Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Nipissing. Thank you. Uh, and good afternoon, Speaker. Uh, municipal support is building in my riding and across the province for a fairer system between municipalities and railroads. Municipalities believe the government should implement a new system of municipal property assessment for railroad right-of-way properties based on utilizing a per-ton-mile concept. Uh, the town of Chisholm and the township of Bonfield, both in my riding, have submitted resolutions calling on the Minister of Finance to take action. The number of municipalities passing similar resolutions is growing. The resolutions call for revisions that would address what they describe as an inequity in property taxation on railway, railroad right-of-ways collected by Ontario municipalities. Speaker, municipalities have been asking the government for years to address this issue, but the government continues to ignore their requests. The government continues to show a lack of respect and willingness to cooperate with municipalities. They continue to make promises but don't deliver on the commitments that are, have been made, and this is one, Speaker, that can easily be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. I lost a couple of good buddies in recent weeks. Both were veterans of the Second World War and both were in the Navy. Tommy Simpson was 95. I met him about 40 years ago when he was a border guard and president of their local union in Windsor. How well I remember him every Remembrance Day on parade, laying a reef and speaker still wearing the uniform that he wore in World War II. He was a radar operator. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal one of only 114 given out for service in that war. In later years, he organized and ran a number of sporting leagues for seniors. He was a hell of a dancer. <laughs> he liked to have a drink. He was a bit of a rascal <laughs> and a great friend. We'll miss his humor and his friendship. Speaker, my other buddy was Larry Costello. He was 92. Larry was well-known in the military circles in the Windsor area. He had a chest full of ribbons, service, legion. He was the official custodian of our downtown cenotaph and a strong voice for all veterans. Larry lied about his age and signed up for service when he was just 16. He spent 25 years in the Navy. He was a longtime volunteer at our downtown mission and at the Windsor Historical Society. He was instrumental in the Veterans Memories Project. Speaker Larry didn't drink, and despite his many years in the Navy, he still couldn't swim a stroke. <laughs> so, we're all going to miss Larry. Condolences to Goldie and the family from all of us here at Queen's Park. Nice tribute with a little dash of unparliamentary language. <laughs> the uh, member statements, the member from Beaches East Shore. Well, thank you, Speaker, and I rise today to remember and salute Ari Nerman, a longtime resident and community leader in Beaches, East York. He died last week, and I was honoured to attend his memorial at the Beaches Synagogue. Now, Ari was the heart and soul of the Beach Hebrew Institute, and he'd been part of the Institute for over 40 years. And that commitment was recognized a few years ago by naming the downstairs of the synagogue the Army Nerman Social Hall. The Beach Hebrew Institute is one of the true hidden gems of Toronto. Many beachers may be unaware that the Institute has even that the Institute exists, yet it has been part of the fabric for the past since 1920. In its early years, it endured periods of anti-Semitism, particularly during the 30s. And for many years during the and after the Second World War, they chose to keep a low profile. But the resilience of its members and the work of men and women like Ari helped the Institute preserve and thrive. And he played a key role in bringing the Institute to the attention of the broader beach community. He was a founder of the Beaches Interfaith Community Outreach Group, which included representatives from Presbyterian, Anglican, United, Roman Catholic, Mennonite, and Baptist churches, whose primary initiative was a drop in pro program for the less fortunate. And he was a leader whose actions reinforced a spirit of inclusiveness and mutual respect through interfaith engagement. He was recognized for his commitment to the community by being named Beach Citizen of the Year twice in 2005 and 2013, and he also was awarded the Queen's Medal, Jubilee Medal. In times like these, it's important to recognize and celebrate and emulate 
great, valuable people like Ari Nurman. And by all accounts, he embodied what it means to embrace and build an inclusive and engaged society. And I wish I'd had the opportunity to spend more time with him. It was a real pleasure, and I'm pleased to be able to share his story with you today and all of Ontario. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour to stand in the House today to recognize a very important anniversary that just passed. On February 20th of this year, Mr. Larry Garrett of Petroy, Ontario, officially began his 50th year of employment with the town of Petroya. Today, wow. Mr. Garrett serves the residents of the town of Petroya as a public works foreman. As a resident of Petroya myself and someone who has known Larry for many years, I would like to say how lucky we are in Petroya to have such a long-standing, knowledgeable employee of the town. Despite long since earning the chance to kick off his work boots, Larry refuses to slow down. In fact, Mr. Garrett was hard at work this week on behalf of the town of Petroy, just a few blocks from here at the Ontario Good Roads Association Conference. I want to join all of my colleagues at the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, the residents of the town of Petroy, in congratulating Mr. Larry Garrett on his impressive accomplishment and thank him for his many years of service. There's no doubt in my mind that Mr. Garrett's contributions are a major reason why Petroy, Ontario has come to be known as the greatest town on earth. Thank you, Larry, and there's, here's to the next 50. Thank Adiós, you, Larry. Thank you. Fellow members, students, the member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I rise on behalf of the good people of Algoma, Manitoulin, who once again uh, were suffering and were, were affected by road closures in my riding. Just again, a couple of weeks ago, Highway 17, our Trans Canada Highway, the artery across this country was shut down for an extended period of time. That happens repeatedly and too many times. People don't have any options, like the small community of Duberville, who, if that road shuts down, they're isolated. They can't get to, can't get from, and they can't get their kids to school, can't get to doctor's appointments. This is happening across northern Ontario, not just in my writing. Just an example from the group, uh, from their report, the, North, the Northern and Eastern Ontario Rail Network highlighted some of these issues that have happened. Highway 11 on, on November 24th was shut down for 24 hours. High, so Highway 17 was closed repeatedly for four-day periods because of snowstorms. Shutdowns at 16 separate occasions just had happened. The, the answer to this, Mr. Speaker, is looking at secondary routes, looking at emergency routes, but let's make sure that rail is part of that discussion. This government has shut down rail in Northern Ontario, and if we are going to diversify and look at real transportation and providing the economies and getting our people to and from and getting the product to flow across this country, rail has to be part of that discussion, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, March 2nd, Canadian Blood Services is holding a blood donor clinic at the Mosque of Mercy in my riding of Ottawa South. Speaker, there's an increased need now for blood donations to replenish blood supplies as winter weather often disrupts blood donor collections across the country. Half of Canadians will need blood or know someone that will need blood to, at some point in their lives, yet only 4% of us donate blood. Blood donations are a critical part of everyday medical care that is used in major surgeries, medical procedures, cancer treatment, and managing disease. Uh, less than an hour of your time can make an incredible difference in a person's life. I encourage everyone in Ottawa South to drop by the Mosque of Mercy on Hong Club Road tomorrow between 12.30 and 3.30 or 5 to 7 p.m. to donate. I'll be here in Toronto tomorrow because I have to be here for debate, so I'm sorry that I can't be there, but I want to thank the Mosque of Mercy and Canadian Blood Services, volunteers for hosting the Blood Donor Clinic. That's something they do five times a year as neighbours and community members. It's important to look after each other uh, and our needs, and donating blood is a way of doing that. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you very much, Speaker. This past Saturday, I was thrilled to join over 300 walkers and volunteers for the opening of Renfrew County's coldest night of the year, Walk for Homelessness, in Pembroke. Forty-two teams assembled at the Legion before heading out to raise funds for homelessness in Renfrew County. It was truly gratifying to see and feel the enthusiasm among the people as they got ready to hit the streets. When organizers joined the national campaign, they set a goal of $40,000. Of 115 communities participating countrywide, Renfrew County was the first to reach its goal. The announced total 
was a whopping $68,449, which didn't take into account, into account monies raised that day. Committee Chair Dave Studham stated that they were the first to reach their goal, beating out Montreal, Ottawa, Edmonton and Calgary. Congratulations to Chair Studham and his entire team of volunteers. I particularly want to mention OPP Officer Jerry Novak, who has been a driving force in supporting youth and the homeless in Renfrew County. I also want to thank Jimmy Lapointe of Petawawa Toyota for giving the campaign a real boost by making a $6,000 donation. The funds will go to the Grind Emergency Refuge and the Renfrew County Safe Shelter for Youth. The Safe Shelter for Youth assists young people aged 16 to 21 who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. And the Grind Emergency Refuge is a three-bed shelter that provides temporary accommodation to assist adults who are homeless or who are at risk of homelessness. But of course, the biggest thank you goes to those people who walked and or sponsored walkers to raise this amazing total. The one thing that never shocks me is the size of the hearts of the people in my communities. They have once again shown that with their amazing generosity. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements from member from Ajax Pickering. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Virtually uh, everyone in this House annually honours all places of worship, including Tamil, Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, Ismaili observances, just to name a few, and including ceremonies of Taipongal, Ramadan, Eid, Al Fitr, the end of Ramadan, time fasting for Muslims, and Holi, and Diwali, Yom Kippur, Passover, and Rosh Hash Hannah. Christians will celebrate Easter season the faithful observance which is celebrated worldwide by almost 2.2 billion Christians. This religious observance is preceded by Lent, which began today on Ash Wednesday for a period of six weeks leading up to Easter. I attended Ash Wednesday service today, as you may have noticed the black ashes on my forehead. April 14th marks Good Friday and commemorates the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his death at Calvary with Mother Mary at his feet as he died. Good Friday represents the sacrifices and suffering in Jesus' life and the selfless acts from a man free from sin to save sinners. They placed a crown of thorns on his head, causing further pain and also piercing his side with a lance, ensuring his death. The crucifixion was the culmination of a number of events in Holy Week, including the resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday, April 16th, two days following the crucifixion and his ascension into heaven 40 days later. Easter Sunday is the celebration of our Lord from the dead and proving once and for all that he is the Son of God. Holy Week, including the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, is observed by Christians and Catholics in Ontario alone that will be praying in some 30 languages at Easter. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Further member states. The member from Stormont, Dundas and South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. Businesses and entrepreneurs are the lifeblood of a thriving economy, and in Cornwall and the counties of Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry, we know how to celebrate our achievements. This past Saturday, the Cornwall and Area Chamber of Commerce hosted its annual Business Excellence Awards Banquet. The winners are each, in each category are as follows. Business of the Year to Lamacor under the President Guy Robichaud. Small Business of the Year to Urban Breweries and the owners Andy and Karen Rohrbeck. Entrepreneur of the Year went to Joss Castleman for the owner of Kings and Little Ones. Pastor of the Year for raising Cornwall's profile to Lars Ole Harrelson. Tourism Excellence Award to the Annual Apples and Arts uh, Tour. Economic Impact to Morburn Industries and the Above and Beyond Award went to the Hidden Secret of the Area, the Nav Center. The Breakthrough Award to the Shorty Jenkins Classic Curling Competition. And the two major awards, Lifetime Achievement of the Year for Long-Term Success, Community Involvement, and Being a Role Model went to Tom and Bill Kinev. In addition to their very successful businesses and providing employment to generations of local residents, they have always dedicated their time and resources to the benefit Cornwall and area. The Citizen of the Year was awarded to a very deserving Dr. Rachel Navanilan. She started out with a small backyard fundraiser, and it has evolved into a passion that has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars that benefits young children locally and around the world. On behalf of the residents of Stormont, Dundas, and South Hungary, well done. Thank you, Speaker. I thank all members for their statements. Pursuant